Hello and welcome to Angel Hour. Hello, if you're new to Angel Hour and you're watching from Romania, a big warm welcome to you. Also a warm welcome to people who I know watch me regularly in England, Australia, New Zealand, Sweden and America and other countries around the world. So I'm very proud to be here today to come out on Romania Meditation Summit and I look forward to talking to you about clairvoyance. Now as some of you already know, uh, I'll say it again for people who don't know me and my work, I'm Jacqueline Piper and I am a lifelong clairvoyant medium. I come from a background and a family of clairvoyant mediums. Spirit world has been around me since I was a child. I really don't know my life any other way. And I'm sure it's the same for lots of you watching. And I want to talk today about clairvoyance, what it is, how you can open your third eye and develop it and then I will be talking to you personally. I will be coming to you and giving you clairvoyant readings. I have actually drawn one oracle card for everybody watching this either live or on the playback. So the one card that I have chosen for everybody is this card, Compassion, and the card is from Doreen Virtues, Archangel Oracle Deck, and the card is Archangel Zadkiel. Now the card itself says, soften your heart with respect to this situation and all the people involved, including yourself. That's so important when you have harsh feelings towards yourself or other people. The person you are damaging the most is you. An archangel of Sajkael works on the violet, the amethyst ray of dissolving, releasing, softening harsh energies. And this is the archangel to dissolve and transmute lower vibrations. So I want to move on to the clairvoyance part of the show and if you've been wondering how clairvoyance actually works and you know a little bit about it I hope that this will increase your knowledge and help you to go further. So I have drawn a little a very basic diagram of the third eye chakra. You can see here the third eye chakra. Every chakra down the body, third eye, the throat, the heart comes out of the back of the body and the front. It's not just from the front, although sometimes we think more from the front of the chakra. And that's because we're looking at things coming towards us. The back of the chakra here is usually energy and things in the past that have moved behind us. And there are many different levels to each chakra. You can see here that I've drawn in divisions. And these are the different levels. The first level in the physical body, the second in the emotional body layer, the third, the mental, and then we move up through the astral and the higher spiritual levels. So, an example of a blocked third eye would be something like this. One of the energy levels and layers blocked. For this example, I've drawn a third eye at the front with a mental level energy. A lot of energy for clairvoyance and the mediumship comes through into the level of the energy field. So this level goes all the way around the aura and this is where most mediums pick up impressions 
from the spirit world. However, if it's blocked, you're not going to be able to easily have the information from the higher vibrational levels of the energy field come down and through and register in your mind. So basically, clairvoyance is about keeping your energy field clear. There are seals on every level of the third eye. So, what you need to do is work out where your blocks are. If your third eye is intermittent, or it's not open, or it is not as open as you would like it to be, everybody can develop from the point you are at the moment. It doesn't matter whether you've never seen anything clairvoyantly in your life, you can gently work with your third eye to release the blockages and to bring impressions through from the spirit world. Now I'm sure most people watching are aware that the word chakra means spinning wheel of light. It's a Sanskrit word and the chakra spins. It's a clockwise spin and it draws in universal knowledge and information which is omnipresent. It's there all of the time. Whether you see it, whether you're aware of it or not, depends on how receptive you are. So if you think of yourself as a radio receiving station, you want that signal to be as clear as possible. So it doesn't have to be 100%. Like all energies, it will flow better at some times than others. But what you can do is you can work with Archangel Zadkiel and I'm going to do a short meditation before I move on and do some clairvoyant readings for viewers. But before that I want to talk about how you can work with sound healing and crystals to open the third eye. Here a talk. Now you can see there it's a third eye tuning fork. So this tuning fork is calibrated roughly as well as it can be shall we say. Um, this is the best that's available on the market at the moment and I know as we develop things will become more sophisticated and you should be very careful with sound. Never ever strike the tuning fork and point it right into the third eye because it will be just too much. You need to be very gentle and before you even strike the tuning fork you want to relax and then open your hand down your aura in front of the third eye intending that your hands stop where there's any block. Now that might be further out in your energy field depending on which layer you're going to clear or it might be much closer. But trust your feelings. Trust your confidence. You can't make yourself have a feeling. So when you do this, if it feels right, it is right. If it feels wrong, then it's wrong. Trust your feelings. They are a very accurate gauge and barometer. So you would just run your hand down just relaxing and allowing yourself to feel where there is um, a block and then strike the tuning fork gently and then bring it down to the level where your finger has stopped and then you can take your hand away and allow that vibration to go through the levels of your aura intending that it will break up the blockage. Now I can feel in my own energy field and I can also see that there's a slightly brownish energy although I'm very clairvoyant and I've been using the third eye professionally for 33 years, I still clean my third eye regularly. It's called spiritual balance. I know that lots of times when you meditate, you can call the pure white light of the angels 
into your third eye, into your throat, your heart, and ask them to clear your chakras. So that is one way of doing it. And another very popular way is to work with crystals, cleaned crystals that you have either run under water and intended for any lower energies or programming to go into the water and clear them, or you've smudged with intention, or you've left outside in the moonlight and the sunlight on the earth in nature to be cleansed. And this brings them back to their original resonance. So I have here one large Lemurian crystal and one ordinary clear quartz point. You can use either. If you work with the clear quartz point, you will want to program it first and that's really simple to do. You just hold it in your hands, your eyes, and send your energy and your thought into the crystal, asking the crystalline energy to be a cleansing and clearing wand. Now as I saw this and done that, I have felt the crystal respond. There was an actual burst of energy and light from the consciousness of the crystal up my arms and into my energy field. So I know that that's the response I was looking for and that might happen straight away, make you a little while and it can be very subtle and you might not actually feel an energy flow back, you might just have a sense and know that it's happened. But it's asking the crystal to work with you for the purpose that you intend, that's important. And then you would do it in a way, just running your hand down and I'm staying here again. And with this, it's very gentle and you can put, I'm getting a lovely flow of pure white light into my third eye and I'm aware of my third eye chakra spinning and I can see clairvoyantly the white light pouring through into my third eye and I'm going to stop that there and I'm going to talk about the Lemurian crystal. These are much more powerful as I'm sure you know and most people who work with Lemurians are really aware of power and the potential, the programming that is inherent when these were created. The Lemurians energize them and there are codes of light, specific codes of light in the Lemurians and along these lines here are where the different levels of energy and information are placed in the crystal. There's another one here, a smaller one where you can see the lines very clearly and it's about working with a crystal that feels right to you. Trust what feels right and one day it would be this one and another day that one. It's not usually the same every day although it might be for a few days but every time just check. Just check in with your feelings that that's the right one. Easy and quick to do. So I'd be more careful with the Lemurian crystal because it's far more powerful and as I that now I can see that there's gold energy coming off the point of the crystal. If you are at all clairvoyant or if you are sensitive or attuned you might also be aware of the gold energy coming from the crystal there. And this is why I've done for quite a long time and I've often used it on various different chakras, not just the third eye, but I would do it exactly the same way to clear my eye. I go down and I'm further out this time. 
I'm being guided to go further out and that's because this crystal is more appropriate for this level and it's the perfect crystal to clear something that's blocking me on that level of my energy field and this feels very different to the quartz crystal point. They are both excellent but like people they're filled in different ways so uh, a mixture is always good and I could actually sit here holding this like this for a long long time it feels beautiful um, but I, I won't do that to you I'll, I'll move on to working with you to release some of the blockages in your third eye so if you have crystals with you and you have points please hold them now and put the points into the palm there's a, a lovely chakra in the middle of the palm there are tiny ones on the thumbs and fingers you might have felt well around so do have the crystal putting the energy into the chakra not pointing that way where it's actually sending it out okay so this is a receiver of universal energy and you want it coming in so i just have a sip of my water where i've got a piece of amethyst energizing the water and another lemurian point and i really notice how different the water tastes and the energy coming off of it especially when the Lemurian crystals have been in the water. That's such a healthy thing to do. But always check that the crystal you put into the water is safe to go into the water. The quartz family are fine. Rose quartz, clear quartz, smoky quartz and Lemurians are fine. But please don't put crystals uh, that have a high lead content into the water uh, or copper. Um, do just Google and check first because sometimes there are certain um, minerals and chemicals you don't want going into the drinking water from crystals like malachite. Anyhow, lots are safe. Um, so yes, crystals into your palms. And just relax, and I'm going to call in Archangel Zadkiel. Archangel Zadkiel, Archangel Zadkiel, Archangel Zadkiel. So I'm feeling a response my energy field, I am feeling angelic hands on my shoulders, I'm also feeling that soft, loving, angelic energy blending with my auric field and I know that I have an angel present and blending with my aura. So I'm just going to relax even more and I suggest you do the same so you can pick up the vibration and be attuned at the same time. And just imagine that wonderful purple violet energy, that ray of colour, the purples and the violets coming down your energy field. Feel it coming down above your head, flowing down all through your head, all through your crown and washing into your third eye chakra. And just be aware how Archangel Asadkayel has hands at the back and at the front. So there's an angel hand either side of your third eye. And the chakra is being cleared at the front. Like in dreams of light, 
going right through the middle in just the right quantities and just the right vibration. Just clearing my third eye and I can feel it's more clogged on the right and it's freer on the left and you might be experiencing a feeling of where the energy flows easily and where it's blocked. And Archangel Zadkiel is transmitting to me telepathically in my mind to talk to you about the gateways. There are gateways in each chakra, specific gateway points, which when you're ready to download cosmic and universal information and also information from your higher self, your soul and your soul group energy are opened. You'll find if you are on the ascension path that when you work uh, to com committedly clear your energy on a regular basis, you get to stages where these things will open for you and you may already have opened some of the galactic gateways or you may not. Um, but right now what's happening is there are many angels, archangels, sadkiels, angels coming into everybody watching. I can see many purple robed angels coming in and they're going out to everybody watching and coming in a circle around you. And just be aware of how that beautiful purple violet energy is bathing the whole of your energy field and it's simply flowing through every chakra point remembering that every chakra is connected to the chakra above it and below it as well as the whole of the chakras in your overall energy important to allow the purple violet flame energy to move through all of your aura and that is what they're doing now. You can feel where it's going and you can also be aware of how energy which has been held in your field is being released and cleansed. And I would like you to visualise yourself walking through a doorway into a room which is painted purple. In the centre of the room, it is a circular room, there is a beautiful circular fire pit. And in this fire pit, there is the most wonderful violet, purple, silver and gold flame of energy. And the whole of the room is lit by this energy and it's moving through you now, the silver and the violet and the gold. And in the room with you, around the inside of the circulars, are Archangels, Sadkiel's angels and you might experience them as translucent angelic beings of light each holding a flame of purple violet energy in their hands and the perimeter of the flame is flickering with gold and silver light and that silver light first comes down through your crown. A beautiful silver light flowing into the whole of your energy system. Silver purifies. And just take that into your energy field. Imagine you're breathing in silver. And let it flow all of the way down your to your feet and 
And now the angels are bringing a gold, a golden energy which again feels different into your crown. And this is the gold of higher wisdom, higher consciousness and your soul's wisdom. And as this energy comes down into your crown, you can feel that there is this beautiful golden flow of light. The angels often bring gold. It's known as one of the vibrationary colours, bringing wisdom, enlightenment, healing. And it also repairs your energy. So you have areas in your chakras, in your third eye which have been ruptured energetically and this occasionally happens. Be aware of golden angelic hands just healing those areas. Sometimes areas are blocked from past life experiences and past life traumas staying in your aura. But the angels are drawing out blockages now and releasing them, transmuting them out through your aura. And don't be surprised if you feel things being pulled out and taken away. And this is often the case, you can actually feel energy being moved around and out of your body. And now that golden energy goes all the way down your body, right down over your legs and feet, and goes down into the earth. However far below you the earth is, it's going down through the building, down through any other floors, through the foundations, building, and into the earth so that you are in the middle of a current of wonderful angelic light and you are also giving it into the earth for the earth's healing. And just relax into this energy and you can feel the joy of the angels as they send you and they're so happy to be working with you. They want to work and help people and they wait for opportunities for people to allow them to come close and give them the time and the quiet space to fully draw close. No. And now you just feel soft feather like energy coming down across the front of your third eye. And what's happening here is they are healing and settling down any areas, any levels of the chakra which are not spinning in a coordinated way with the other levels so that everything is brought into balance. So you have this wonderful vortex of light softly, securely opening, spiraling out of the front of your forehead and all the way through the layers of your aura and you will find that a doorway of white light opens in front of your third eye and it's very safe for you to go through, through that doorway. And as you do so, you are met by your guardian angel who holds your hand. And your guardian angel is connecting you up to your clairvoyant sight and you accept divine 
energetic healing. Allow golden and white light to come back. Back into your third eye and into your mind. You feel it flow down into your physical body, into your physical mind. And it's all settling and the angels are sealing your aura in a sphere of gold and white light. And this is so that all of the energy you have been given and absorbed stays with you for you to assimilate and absorb at your own time and pace. So, just take your time gently and gracefully adjust, knowing that the angels are still with you and will continue to and that every time you do this meditation, you will be releasing something more, a little extra, unburdening yourself a little further. Good, all right, just see those shadows and clouds lifting out of the furthest edges of your aura now. They're really lifting away off world, being taken by the angels, wrapped up in golden angelic cloth. Perfect. So you have a shiny, clean third eye, and you can come back into the space where we're on the screen together. So let's have a look and see who's joined me. We have Sandra, hi Sandra, hi Diana, hi Clara, hi Vivian, hi Brenda, hi Nina, hi Sandra, different Sandra, hi Hannay, hi Eugenie. Right. All I want to go to here called Di Summer and I want to go with the deck that I have here which is the Oracle of the Fairies and this is by Karen Kay, the Oracle of the Fairies and my first card, the first reading is going to be for Diana Summer. Okay, so what have we got here? Purity, purity, Diana Summer. I read the card and then I'll make my link. Purity. Always trust in the purity of your heart. You look inside your heart and within it you will find the answer to your question. Right, it's beautiful unicorn there and a lovely fairy energy so my, my first thought is ask the unicorns the ascended horses of light to draw close to you Diana on a more regular basis to clear not just your third eye but the chakras above your head so as I look at you clairvoyantly as I look at you Distantly, there is a lot of energy going on in your soul star chakra above your crown. Now, for those who don't know, the soul star is around six inches above your crown, and energy from your soul is held there until such time as it can step more fully into your physical vehicle as your consciousness rises and you let go of lower vibrations, the soul energy downloads in stages and is anchored in your chakras and this is what we call the ascension ladder. So as I go back to Diana's soul star, the energy is quite stormy, it's quite choppy in the soul star. Now the unicorns have obviously stepped forward 
and I do see that there are a whole group, and I could say a herd, couldn't I, of unicorns actually waiting now an ascended being, whether it is a horse, whether it's a cat's soul, a pure white lion, is a higher vibration than I am, than you are. It's purer, it's holding more light. It doesn't matter what kind of animal it is, I am an animal. A horse, an ascended horse, is a stronger, more powerful, purer being of white light. And they are very willing to come in and help humans because everything and everyone is connected on the earth. It's not just the human animal separate from the horse animal. We are all part of source and they volunteer to come back and help clear the energies and raise the vibration. So, unicorn energy, Diana, and I also want to talk to Diana about the intergalactic influence around her because I'm also being asked to talk about um, an actual spacecraft of light um, above Diana. Now, lots of us these days are at a level of consciousness where we are connecting with the different star seed families and not just the ones that we've known for a long time like the Andromedans, the Palladians, the Syrians, the Arcturians. There are many, many, many more stepping forward now because now is an extremely important time. We are at a cosmic shift point as so many people know. We're going into a higher vibration, there's new energy coming onto the earth and therefore there is a lot more help from the spirit world. Now when I talk about the spirit world, I don't just mean the guides, the angels, the ascended horses, I do mean the intergalactic beings of light who are coming forward to this planet. I've been looking at a lot of them recently. And the ones that I'm particularly looking at around Diana at the moment actually are from Cygnus. Um, Cygnus energy comes through and it's very soft. And their symbol, of course, is the swan. And beings of light from Cygnus really bring a soothing, calming, gentle yet powerful energy through. Now this relates in to the energy around Diana's soul star. So these are the volunteers from the world who are asking me to ask or to advise her or to suggest to her because they're there. I'm giving her this message so that she can now consciously connect with them, which I believe she will do in meditation and download the wisdom. They do bring knowledge and information codes of light which when you connect they just drop down and you can feel shifts of light coming in above your head as they download the cosmic wisdom. So that is where Diana um, or where Diana's message led me to. So um, I'm going to move on again. And see where I'm drawn to go. And I am drawn to go to Nina. I'm going to Nina Wolf, and for Nina, I'm going to uh, draw a past card, and I will be clairvoyantly looking at one of your past lives, whichever one I'm keyed into by my guides, and the oracle card. I can do it without the card. However, it's nice, it's nice to have an intro, isn't it? So here we go then. This is for Nina, a past life reading, and this will pertain to something that will help you grow. I already know that, Nina. Bringing it to your conscious awareness. It may be a life you already know about, or it may just resonate with you as I begin to read it. So here we are, Father, Father is the energy, Nina. And as I give you that card right away, I feel that your father has passed 
true that your father is in the spirit world because a man draws close straight away almost as if he's been waiting. So I want to talk to you about the clearing up of, of issues, things and emotions surrounding you and your father in this lifetime first of all. But I also want to tell you that that pattern, that arrangement between your souls goes back. It is historical and it goes back over several lifetimes and that's more than several because I'm seeing the number seven. So we do have uh, repeating patterns. We choose to incarnate with the same souls. Um, from our soul group again and again to learn to iron out issues and I'm symbolically seeing the push and pull uh, between the two of you and I feel that in some lives his energy was uh, quite dominant over yours and perhaps he also withdrew from you and I, I know um, that the karma between you is not quite finished but I also know that it can be. I also know um, I'm being told that you can clear up the residual pattern through your meditations and through asking the angels, the angels of karma. Call them when you meditate, just light a candle and call angels of karma. It's the intention that is important. If you open your heart and ask with your heart and your mind for a particular type of help, you will receive a response and the help will come towards you from the spirit world. You don't have to know particular names. After all, a name will be one thing in one culture and a different name in a different culture. It's all about the resonance of the energy and that help is available to you Nina and that is what my guides want me to give you today. So I'm going to read for somebody else now. Vivian, I'm going to go to a lady here called Vivian Kojo. And as the water I'm which card deck is the right one for Vivian. And I'm actually going to the lovely Oracle of the Fairies. And this next card is for Vivian. So let's see. Okay, Vivian card uh, for you is go outside. Now I realise that might be difficult substantially at the moment. I'll read the card first and then I'll see what I get for you. The card says go outside. It's time to go outside. Have you been staying a lot and longing to go outside? And as I say that and my energy opens up more, I know that I've got your mum um, or a, a lady in the spirit world who is definitely family. If she's not mum, she's uh, on mother's side, as in grandmother. Um, but she's just stepped in and she's no, no hanging around. She's right there. Um, tune into the powerful peace of nature wherever you are and feel at one with your habitat. Now, I think. My impression uh, from that is that you have not been feeling at one at the moment with your habitat, i.e. where you've been staying in. So do look at making some changes energetically. Okay, You can change the energy of your environment by putting crystals in the corners of a room and asking the angels to make arcs of rainbow light between one crystal and another across the room in a beautiful cross of light, so arches 
rainbow arches of light. You only need to have one crystal, it doesn't have to be this size, it can be a small tumble stone crystal. And you can place that in the corner of the room after you've energised it and ask the angels to put the in the which are right to help you feel at ease, to feel comfortable and to keep the energy clean and clear. Keep opening the windows, getting light, getting fresh air in, light a candle, the energy, the light, the firelight. Angels who work with the fire energy like Archangel Gabriel cleanses, cleans, purifies, keep inviting the angels in to keep your space clean and clear and you will begin to feel much happier. And that's what I want to say to Vivian. I particularly feel Archangel Gabriel wants to work with you and help keep you clear on an emotional level and keep up the purification and you will find that you are living in a bubble of beautiful angelic light. They will place a bubble of their energy inside your room so you have a pristine place. Even though you might be inside, uh, it's difficult to go outside, you can bring the light in to your living space. That is available for everybody, you only have to ask. And crystals are fabulous for grounding the energy. The angels love to work with crystals. So also wearing a crystal, Vivian, lifts your energy as I hold these now. Straight away, my whole energy feels lighter. These are a beautiful high vibration and they lift my energy. If you're buying crystals online, I'm sure Vivian knows this, always buy crystals that have grown in the earth over tens of thousands of years, sometimes longer. Don't buy crystals that have been made in a laboratory. They will not hold the energy of the earth. They may look pretty, but in terms of healing, they won't help you. They will do you no good whatsoever. They're a chemical copy and they have absorbed the earth energies. They're not full of energy and light in a natural form. But they really are a plastic copy, if you like. So, I hope that gives you some food for thought. And I'm going to move on again. And I'm just seeing where I'm drawn to. Okay, so uh, the next person I feel drawn to is Eugenia Stefania. And I'm not going to try and pronounce your last name because I'm sure I won't be very good at it. Um, but Eugenia Stefania. I am it's a pretty name and I'm coming to you and I've just been asked to go to my past life deck for you and uh, on this occasion I'm working with a deck I've had for probably a couple of decades um, during virtue past life deck so here we go then Eugenia let's see what comes up Okay, so I am here with you, for you. No! <laughs> you couldn't make that happen, could you? It's the Father card to come out here for you. Right, so I've got to look into this vibration there for you. So as I look at your energy, um, I feel that there's some kind of separation has happened in your life, uh, Eugenia, in terms of the father energy. Uh, I don't feel um, that there has been a straightforward relationship um, with a male energy in your life. Uh, 
I also feel um, children around you, I don't know if they're your children or but young children around you and I also feel that sometimes you have been struggling uh, emotionally at the moment. And I do feel that you have felt like you have not had anybody to really turn to. People um, that you really want to open up and completely share with. I feel um, that you have things inside of you which you haven't uh, expressed and spoken about. Um, or been able to release and I do know that some of this comes from your childhood uh, and point uh, emotionally in your childhood the bonds that were there that were broken and that didn't hold and that you couldn't um, get your um, love met, met by somebody or it's like somebody uh, let you down and this has kind of led to a pattern um, emerging in your current lifetime where you find yourself um, in that same cycle, that same circle. So you, you do need also uh, to look deeper than that. You need to look deeper than that because it goes back. Now this is where I um, don't need to go with the card. I am going through the past life gateway. I'm reading the record of your soul's energy and I want to say that there is a pattern, a past pattern of you being a woman who has been let down by men. All right, so you need to uh, address the issue, not just, uh, or it might be much quicker to look at it on the past life level. Often, when we go into the past life, things clear more quickly. They clear more quickly because the past life is usually a deeper experience and it is the root of the current life situation. So that is my suggestion to you do some past life exploration work so you can find past life regrets online you can find them on my youtube channel Jacqueline Mary Piper um, do the work on yourself and and know that things which you could not explain properly or fully or completely understand in this lifetime it is because the roots, um, the beginnings were in a past lifetime. So when you look at the past and it comes up for you and you get impressions or information from the past life, it then begins to help you to understand and resolve and come to terms with things, heal and move on. It is an accelerated process. And sometimes working with a past life can bring us on years more quickly than just trying to deal with it from the present and the current life situation. It's very interesting and it's very informative as well. It is a really healthy and good experience to have. So, I'm going to say goodbye for now, but I will be back with more Angel Hours on my page, Jacqueline Mary Piper, Angels Crystal, Psychic Medium. Thank you for watching and I hope what I have said has been rewarding and interesting for those of you um, that I've read for. I send you love, um, I send you goodwill, take good care of yourselves, remember to work with the angels, they are always there. Let's not forget them. They can help you in so many different ways. So goodbye for now with lots of love.